All right, this video today is to try and squelch fears about Bitcoin miners. Everybody seems to be freaked out right now. Lots of people jumping into the MicroStrategy trade. Don't get me wrong, I actually love the MicroStrategy trade, but it is not a Bitcoin miner trade. And there's stuff you got to realize about that. So we're starting off here with my analysis on what the multipliers are, like how far Bitcoin can go and what the multipliers are for MicroStrategy's trade and Bitcoin miners. These are rough approximations, but they're pretty accurate based upon last halving cycle and what's happening this cycle thus far. And then forecasting what's going to happen next, which I'm pretty good at. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff here, but I want to start off with Bitcoin, I believe, could go 2 to 3.5x higher this cycle than it is today. That is me saying putting my targets at 150k on the minimum and 280 on the high. That's my baseline. MicroStrategy, I believe, is a 1 to 2x multiplier of that. Now, there's some stuff, you, some nuance you need to see from what happened last cycle and this cycle, so you get an idea of how accurate that's going to be and potentially how overbought it is already. Bitcoin miners, I believe, are plus three to five X, the underlying asset. So at a minimum, I'm telling you that you'll get six X to roughly 10 X return on miners to substantially higher than that, to like closer to nine X to, you know, 15 X on them. So, so keep these things in mind. And here's how I come to this. Okay. Like we'll, we'll, we'll walk through this. So first off, I believe that MicroStrategy is a perpetual money printer, which is a similar thing to what Bitcoin is. So you got a money printer on top of a money printer. And when I say that, I'm not talking about fiat money printing. I'm talking about capitalizing off of it. And what, what do I mean by that? I think MicroStrategy is way better than any ETF in the market. And if we get a big retrace in it and somebody has ETFs, I don't know. I think it'd be crazy for them not to look at MicroStrategy as something that they would put their money in. And here's why. A, it has no fees. Now, a number of ETFs have no fees for a period of time. That's great. But B, and this is the big part, is what Michael Saylor's strategy has been. Going all the way back to 2020, he's been doing this for um, four years, over four years, actually five years now almost, over four years. He's been, he's been buying the dip. Okay, uh, buying everything. He buys the tops too, right? Like he, he just keeps buying. And uh, that doesn't necessarily play out well after the top. Doesn't look great. But by the next cycle, it looks amazing and he looks brilliant. And all of a sudden people are like, Michael Saylor. And he is brilliant. He's the last remaining CEO of the dot-com bu bubble for a reason, okay? And this guy, if you spend any time listening to him, you could see how insightful he is. And you could see how... How, how versed he is on history, all history. The man reads like crazy. And, and it'll, it gives him a better vision of the future because he's so thoughtful and he's done all this research. So he buys Bitcoin the whole time. So he dilutes his shares. He sells shares like he did just yesterday or over the weekend, I should say, but reported yesterday. $800 million in Bitcoin was purchased again. Now, this is brilliant because he dilutes his shares. Sure, the shares technically lose value. But then at that same time, Michael Saylor buys Bitcoin with it. And when it goes up, it actually turns out to be a net positive. So then his company's worth more. People buy into that. And then the stock becomes overvalued again. Right now, it's actually pretty heavy, heavily overvalued. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But but it becomes overvalued again. And then he dilutes it again. And then he buys more Bitcoin. It's actually it's brilliant. And it constantly raises the value. I, I originally thought he'd get a one to two, a one point two to one point three x multiplier, but um, so far, thus far, he's proven that wrong. It's it's over two x. So we'll look at that in a little bit. But he's done really, really well. And I I don't see why that stops. It might slow down, and I'm going to make a case for that in a minute here, which is why I'm not advocating that people jump out of miners and into this, especially when miners will give you a higher rate of return. And I'll make that case. All right, so here's something else you need to understand. Here's why I think MicroStrategy isn't comparable to Bitcoin miners. 
Riot last cycle went 154x. Mara went 237x. MicroStrategy? Not as much. We'll cover that in a second. Also, if you look at the size of these companies, Mara is, is well, I should say this. Let me rephrase this. MicroStrategy is 4x larger in market cap than Mara. Actually, that's that's drifting higher than that even now. This is as of writing this a few days ago, March 9th, three days ago. So it's higher now, right? So CLSK is probably closer to 7, like, or I should say MSTR is 7x bigger than CLSK. MSTR is probably t getting closer to 30x bigger than Cypher. It's close, it's probably like closer to 35x bigger than Bit Farms. So there's this rule about like there's diminishing returns that comes with size. And why is that? Because it takes a lot more influx of capital to be able to raise the price. So there's this concept in the Bitcoin world where Bitcoin moves first. Then it would traditionally be Ethereum moves next. Um, Ethereum has kind of pseudo been replaced by Solana right now. But here's the deal. Both of those can outpace Bitcoin technically, especially Solana. Why? Because it has a much smaller market cap than Bitcoin. So a much smaller amount of capital can launch the price. And it's going to be more volatile of an asset. It's got a higher beta to it. So when you buy these miners and they're up 265% in six weeks and Bitcoin's only up 50%, that's what you're signing up for. Now, this is important. Let's look at MicroStrategy's history, right? So I told you I told you that Riot went up 154x last cycle and Mara went up 237x. What did MicroStrategy do? It went up 13. 13. These went up 154 and 237x. MicroStrategy went up 13. Remember this number. <laughs> right now, it's already hit 11x higher. It's almost completed its move from last cycle. And there's bearish divergence out the wazoo on this thing right now. If you look at monthly, not so much, but weekly, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there because we're lower in the RSI than the last peak, and yet we're higher in price. Okay? Could it keep going higher? Yes, it could. This is a perpetual money printer. But this company is also overvalued to their holdings by a decent margin, and we'll touch on that in a second. But just remember, what is what do you expect this thing to do from here? Do you expect it to go to 3,000? Great, that's 100%. Do you expect it to go to 6,000? Great, that's 200%. Do you expect it to go to 12,000? Like, just, hopefully I got those numbers right. They're off the top of my head. But you have to, you know what, and we should actually just do them right. <laughs> let's do it right. Yeah, so 200% is 4,500 to be accurate. And let's say it gets to the next fib, which I think it'll do. That's 12,000, but that's 686% in returns, okay? I don't see it getting beyond that at all. I just don't. Because 686% re in returns is a shit ton. It's like an 8x return. It puts this company at $400 billion. It puts it as one of the top companies, tech companies in the world. And could that happen? Sure. That can happen. Definitely could happen. Why? Because I said earlier that I believe there's a 2 to a 3x, 3.5x multiplier on Bitcoin still for this cycle. And if this thing operates at 2x, it could do this. But it's going to be harder for it to go beyond that. It's going to be harder. When I say it could be 2 to 3x, I'm being very optimistic for the 3x on MicroStrategy. Okay? Especially considering the fact that we've almost ran as hard as we did last cycle when Michael Saylor was doing the same thing he is now. Now, it's definitely recognized more than it was before, and there's a FOMO trade into this right now. But still, what happens when that runs out? When momentum runs out, this trade will not run as harder because it's not as small as these other caps, and there's reasons to believe that miners are still strong this cycle, and we'll jump into that now. 
Mara, last cycle, like I said, it went up a lot, right? It went up a lot. This is the monthly chart. I don't even think this is peak to trough, but this says 240X, right? <clears throat> and then we see this cycle, it's only up 5X, 5.5X, and it went up 240. Now there's the law of large numbers again. It went up, it was a much smaller company back then. Right now it's 5.4 billion. Sure, totally believe in that argument. But I still also believe that MicroStrategy can go much higher than it is today. I believe that MicroStrategy, and remember, if we get to like the 2x versus versus Bitcoin that I was talking about with micro with MicroStrategy, where it's a 400 billion dollar company. Now let's say that we get crazy here with Mara, and we go up over a thousand x, which is good, right? That's like more than uh, like doubling almost of what MicroStrategy would get you in returns. And this is a large cap, so that's very possible, right? Also, real quick, we're getting near key support zones, guys, guys and gals. It's important to note. But this is a $5 billion company. So this company right now is like a fifth of what of what MicroStrategy is right now, right? So it's 20% of what MicroStrategy's cap is. So the amount of money that needs to flow into this for it to go up a lot is less, significantly less at a fifth, significantly less. And if it happens over a short period of time, which miners tend to do, you'll see an absolute insane run. Now, MicroStrategy right now is up more than the Bitcoin miners. That shouldn't give you a reason to jump into it. That should give you a reason to pause and say, does it make sense that I'm throwing all my money from Bitcoin miners that have a higher multiple? And they have a higher multiple because of the concept of stock to flow. And, if, and you can see this represented in gold miners too. And sure, MicroStrategy has a concept of stock to flow, but also it is much larger of a cap. And so the numbers change when you look at it. So it again, there's the multiple, just like gold miners that these Bitcoin miners get. And we'll talk a little bit more why I think that that's going to be even stronger this cycle. So stick around. But real quickly, let's look at Riot. So again, I think that this is... To me, this isn't even necessarily the max target, but it's probably close. I think 250 for Mara is a big number. And I I personally wouldn't have a problem with 11x from here in Mara, especially if it keeps dropping. Great, keep doing that. I'll buy more. I think my fintechs, well, the fintechs are getting hit today, but they will go up and I think that they could outpace because I'm in options. So I think I'll do really good. All right, so Clean Spark. Let's focus on that. Clean Spark, 154x last cycle. MicroStrategy, 13x. Okay, well, that's a better number too, right? Or was that, I'm sorry, that's Riot. That's Riot, 154x. And then again, we only got 13 out of MicroStrategy, a much larger company and one that can't move as fast or as strong. Key support levels on Riot right now. I don't love Riot, but they do have a decent stack and they're benefiting from the FASB accounting rules too. All these companies are, including MicroStrategy. Now, key volumes here, key level of support on the 100. If anything, I could see this consolidating here before running higher and going back up to 23. And that's going to move so much faster than MicroStrategy. I mean, don't get me wrong. Over the very, very short period of time, there is definitely FOMO into MicroStrategy. And if you're in an ETF, I think the better move is MicroStrategy. That's your safest bet. You'll get a higher multiple of return, potentially double. It, I would say at least if you're getting in, a, like we could see a reduction in MicroStrategy's price here soon because it is overextended. But I think you get at least a, a doubling, like worst case, if your timing sucks, maybe 60% more than your ETF will offer because you don't have the fees and you have this man buying Bitcoin, increasing the value of the company all the time. And the FOMO of that. Because Michael Saylor is brilliant and people are starting to love him and they're jumping on board. And there's a very social element to that that's increasing the price, right? And then you have people that have fear that we're in these miners that are starting to say, oh, it's too competitive, yada, yada, yada. We'll talk about that too. Actually, maybe right now. So the Bitcoin halving, there's a common misconception with the Bitcoin halving. People think that the prices just plummet during the Bitcoin halving. And don't get me wrong, they, they could retrace a little bit for miners because the amount of revenue they'll receive will be cut in half, right? But miners, they stop selling into the Bitcoin halving. And it's not just them. 
Retail does it too. And sure as fuck, you're not seeing it coming from from um, smart, you know, the, the smart smart investors, the 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 smart money. You're not seeing them looking to sell, right? They're they're doing the Michael Saylor approach of purchasing on any dips. That's why that's why Bitcoin's price is so strong. That's why we're at seventy two thousand three hundred today, and probably going to see a recovery in some of these miners before the day ends. I think unless MicroStrategy remains strong today, again, however long it takes that narrative to play out. But miners are coming because when everybody stops selling, the prices go up. And here's the thing. We thought there were going to be a bunch of miners failing. I don't know if there are going to be. Maybe we get one, two of like some publicly traded ones. But everybody was pricing these miners at having revenues in like the 40s, maybe the 50s or 60s, not in the 70s. And what I believe will be the 90s. Nobody's got this priced at $92,000 of Bitcoin. That actually makes it very economical. And so even older miners will be able to make money. Not as much. Not as much. There's heavily diminishing returns, but they won't be in the red. So, again, I don't think people, a lot of people understand what the having event is like and what this looks like for miners and what it looked like last cycle. So take that into consideration. Again, clean spark, same kind of thing. 430, 430x, 43x. Am I right? 43x. And then this cycle, we're up about 850. Okay. So again, micro strategy, 13x. These guys, 240 for, for Mara. Riot. 154 and these guys here 43x for clean spark but they were a very new miner they didn't have any hash so their numbers were definitely the weaker of the bunch right and they, they're only at 3.28 billion for their market cap closer to what riot is right now actually ahead of them but same kind of point again if you do the math here, and we're only at 798%, we did 4,300 last time, and our CleanSpark is such a better run company than it was before, then you can see greater upside. Now, I want to jump topic here. I want to get into the important stuff. So there's some things to consider. One, what did it look like for transactions? These are This is the percent minor revenue from fees historically, correct? So what did it look like miners were getting back in the day? Well, let's look. The 2017 cycle, right? The, the, that was the top, but the ha having was back in, in 2016. Here's what the fees look like. These little tiny amounts right here. Back when Bitcoin was $600. They were nothing. Last cycle, last cycle, before the having, we had fees right down here. Right down here. And then they started to explode higher as the having occurred because... Price go up, people get interested, you see an influx of capital, and fees go up. But this cycle? What the fuck? We haven't even got to the having yet. We haven't even gotten to this point where people get excited and the fees start going up in the miners. We're we like this is this stuff and this stuff, little baby things, right? And look at where we are. Look at what we've already accomplished because of ordinals and just the amount of interest on this network. So we're looking at miners getting a much bigger percentage of the pie than what they were getting last time. Much bigger numbers. And oh, sure, but difficulty has increased. Yes, it has. Sorry about that. Yes, it has. But if you look at like the previous cycle peak and like, let's say 2007, and you look at where the difficulty was at six, I don't even know what that is, but let's just call it six. And then we jump over here to where the next peak was. It was 34, right? So we're looking at like a 5x in, in uh, hash rate. And that's not even, I'm sorry, that's the mid-cycle peak. Let's do this right. Let's do this. Let's do the top to the halving. So we're looking here at, uh, at you know, roughly, what was it? Uh, seven, let's say seven. Let's say seven for the difficulty. And then over here, at close to what we were peaking, it was 86. Or actually, let's do this to the halving. My bad. 7x to the having, 65, right? So we're looking at like a 9x multiplier in difficulty over that time. Well, let's do this over here. So the cycle peak over here was 93. Let's go way over here. So let's go way over here. 
340. So we're actually seeing a, a lower multiple to the difficulty rating versus what we saw the 2016, you know, to or I'm sorry, the 2017 peak to the next halving versus this last peak in 2021 to us being very close to the halving. So the, the difficulty, sure, it's raised, but it's raised at a lower difficulty than what we saw in the previous cycle. And at the same time, we're seeing minor revenue fees increasing. Now, there's other stuff here, too, that I want to talk to real quick. Um, let me look real quick here. Number of new addresses. So here's something else that I wanted to talk to in regard to the having. And I'm going to go back a ways here because I want to show on a broader scale the number of new addresses. And this is stretched out so it doesn't look as dramatic. But you can see this steady increase in new address that, that happens. So the flows over multi years, right? 2017 to current here is still pretty much consistent across the board. Now there's other stuff in number of addresses. This is a better representation. Let me look at this. This is a beautiful one. And you could do this with like 0.1 Bitcoin and it still looks very similar with a slightly lower slope. But look at how consistent the amount of growth is in the Bitcoin network. So we know that we have this consistent rate of growth. We know that minor fees are a lot higher than they were historically. We know that ordinals could come up as a narrative again if people get excited. We know that difficulty has risen, but at a slower rate than the previous cycle. All these things are playing a part here, right? All of these things mean something in what could happen going forward here in this, in this, um, on this network. And let's look at number of transactions too. Look at this. Look at this. We're blowing away transactions compared to previous cycles. Look at this. We're, way, we're well higher. So the argument I am making is that we will see stronger minor revenues than we've seen historically because we've never broken the previous all-time high before the halving before. We've never seen minor fees at the level they're at. The, the transaction and the network growth is on par to what it was historically. And, and, and so we're seeing the growth rates, if anything, strengthen because, again, we have this massive inflow of ETFs and of money coming in from around the world and then people still buying it in spot because some of these other countries around the world, they don't have those ETF options yet. So they're buying on spot and they're driving the price up. And I think so I think the underlying asset of Bitcoin is going to have some of the most dramatic increases, way stronger than what we saw last cycle where we got neutered especially with rates coming down and what I believe will be June. Yes, the rate of inflation is a little bit higher on Supercore and this other stuff. I don't think that matters. The Fed is targeting at 2%. They weren't doing it now. They were doing it by 2025. People need to get this shit through their head. And China is exporting deflation to the world. So we have rates coming down, which will loosen lending, which will free up capital, which will pull it from money market accounts where people are like, why am I getting this fucking return when my friend just got 265 off a of clean spark in six weeks? And so you'll see this mentality coming in where people change their minds and they start to delve into this. And now I'm actually seeing some miners in the green today because Bitcoin is at 72,600. Again, I think it's going to 92,000 before the halving, blowing away by 50% the previous all-time high. These miners are in a point of strength. And yes, MicroStrategy will do well. I love MicroStrategy. I love Michael Saylor. It's going to be a great trade. Think of it before an ETF. But it is not a Bitcoin miner. It's not. It's not because you can't, it's, it's so much larger than these other mining plays down here. So much larger. And these mining plays are getting higher transactional fees than they had before. And they're not going to have to shut down a lot of older equipment because it's still going to be profitable. So I just don't know what to tell you here. I think you can get at least two to three X the miners versus what you would get from MSTR. 2 to 2.5. Maybe 1.5 to 2.5. Who gives a shit? If you can 2x what you had with MicroStrategy, this is the play right now. Now, I shouldn't say right now. Maybe MicroStrategy still outperforms for another week. Maybe. But there will be a point where it comes to a reckoning. 
And it has to, right? Here's why it has to. Let's look up something real quick. How much Bitcoin does MSTR have? I'll whip out my calculator here. We're going to let Grok do the work. I love my little Grok. All right. I think that's the latest read. Whatever. Close enough. Let's give it 205,000 times the current price. It's like we're dropping again. We're all over the place. Whatever. Doesn't matter. $14.78 billion. Why am I bringing this up? Why am I bringing up $14.78 billion for, for MicroStrategy? Because right now they're valued at 26. There's an you're paying an 85% premium for MicroStrategy right now. And people are jumping into this shit. So you could do that. I own this. I've got a quarter of a million dollars in this, and I'm okay with it dropping, right? And maybe we go higher first before we go down. But the smart money is gonna realize what the fuck is going on here. And they will take profits. And so I believe that this trade will start to be neutered for what could be a few months. Because even Michael Saylor can't buy Bitcoin at the rate of bringing this thing to where it's valued appropriately. He could do a lot, and he will. He's proven that he will. But I will, I will say with wholehearted confidence, and I will take the L if I'm wrong on this, Bitcoin miners, the right ones, CleanSpark, probably Mara, BitFarm, Cypher. These are what I consider the right ones. With Mara being the large cap, the one that will probably move first. Well, eh, depending upon overvalued or undervalued status. CleanSpark being number two, but probably the best operationally run, but a smaller stack, about, a, about half to a third of what Mara has. And uh, and then and then it's going to be like Cipher and Bed Farms because they're so much smaller. They're so tiny. <clears throat> but this is the message I want to get across. Don't jump into something that has a lower fucking multiplier at a time when it's 80% more overvalued versus its underlying assets. This is FOMO. This is stupidity. Don't screw yourself with this trade. I love this trade. I loved it when I bought MicroStrategy in the 300s. I loved it when I bought MicroStrategy as calls, leaps, 2025 leaps in the 100s. But it is not a great deal right now. Not that he doesn't have a brilliant strategy and it won't perform well, but this is not the multiplier you want a year plus before we start to get close to a cycle top. It's not the multiplier you want. Not in my opinion. It is for an ETF. ETF alternative, use this. But don't think you're getting a better deal. And then don't be pissed later when I make more money off my Bitcoin miners because I actually looked at the math and the data. Love you guys. Come to the market recap. If you got more questions, that's at 3 o'clock today, Central Time. Also, if you like what you're seeing here, like this and comment, please. Subscribe, ring the bell. That way you can be here more and you can be one of the first people to get notification. And if you join, if you spend $2.99, a little starter pack thing, you'll be able to, in the market recap, ask for one stock for me to look at and I'll try and get to it every, every day, every Monday through Friday. And I'll give you not just the technicals behind it now that I see they are. I'll talk about it from a fundamental and financial statement level too. So that you can get a real good bead of what's going on or at least my perspective of it. I got a pretty good history of being right on a lot of things. Not perfect, but I'm pretty fucking good. So uh, if you if you like this work, support me. And... Uh, and yeah, this is my warning to people that are jumping into MicroStrategy. I just want you to know what you're getting into. It's a great play, but you're probably putting money on the back on the table. Talk to you guys later. See you at 3 o'clock. Bye.